Bow Convoy 39, 41 Allied merchant vessels under Canadian naval escort, en route from Canada to Great Britain. Four days out, and German U-boats penetrated the escort shield. We lost 18 merchant ships and three escort corvettes, with heavy loss of life. There were no confirmed U-boat kills. 3-9 was an appalling disaster. Not the first, and God help us, not the last. As the senior British officer, I recognize the sterling efforts of the Royal Canadian Navy. But we are losing the battle in the North Atlantic. We cannot continue to pit ill-equipped RCN ships without trained crews against the elite of the German Navy and expect to win. I can see what you were doing. Why aren't you down front doing your job? Hey, keep your voice down, eh, boss? People are trying to watch the movie. You know? I've warned you before. Turn in your flashlight, you're fired. I'm what? You heard me. You can't fire me! I quit! I go to hell! the challenge and he couldn't be happier if you have the right stuff for victory well come on canada there'll be new friends to meet new places to see and a chance to play as full a part in this big show as our dads did in the last one this is chns halifax nova scotia 
We keep losing the goodness to the British Navy. You'd have an easier climb up as one of theirs. Yeah, maybe, but I'm not one of theirs. How soon would our Navy give me a command? We need qualified skippers for our Corvettes right now. Corvettes? Yeah, well, I'd rather a destroyer. Join the queue, hotshot. Cargo's in order, sir. Fall the lads in on the jetty, sir. I've got 10 years of sea time and my master's ticket. For that, I'd expect a good ship. Then sign on with the British. They call the shots. We get the short end. Start that hello! What the hell is the Navy doing on my ship? Naval boarding service, Skipper. Routine inspection. Captain Tetsopoulos. One of a kind. So, Mr. Navy, find any German spies on my cargo? Not today, Captain. Yeah, well, thanks for your advice, Lieutenant. Good luck. You need advice from the Navy. Since when? What's wrong, Paul? Hey? Nothing. Well, I might sign on with the RCN. <laughs> So soon you forget Convoy 39? No. Look, Canadian well, escort blown out of the water. No, no survivors. Ships. There's a chance out there by themselves. There are no neutral flags left. Let the, the English fight their own war. Oh, Skipper, like it or not, this is our war. I want to fight back. In the RCN? They're a British joke. And wait till the Yanks get into it. Canada will have two hoops to jump through. Yeah, well, I think you sell Canadian short, Skipper. We've been known to bite Uncle Sam in the ass before. And the king. Stay with the Star of Corinth. Stay with me, Paul. Yeah. Who knows you better? We sailed on five ships together. Who made you first mate? Who helped you get your master's ticket? How will I replace well, you? Dimitri, I could wait another 15 years before I get a command like this in the Merchant Marine. I mean, 15 years, for Christ's sake, I'm ready now. You think you're ready now? The blue suits aren't for us. It's not your world. No, you're wrong. I'm ready now. Look, look, the, the RCN's gonna make me a captain, right? I, mean, I can parlay that back into the merchant service only on my terms. This war's not gonna last forever. Long enough to kill you. I thought you smarter than this, Paul. The North Atlantic belongs to the Germans now. You will be sailing as the escort for Slow Convoy 517. Details. Mr. Reed. 50 merchant ships, sir, carrying oil and munitions from Halifax to England. Convoy formation, 10 columns of five ships, 1,000 yards between the columns, 500 yards between each ship. Ah, very good. The RN destroyer HMS Ensor will act as SOE, Senior Officer of Escort. Four corvettes, one RN, three RCN, make up the rest of the escort force. They will maintain an anti-submarine screen approximately two miles off the convoy flanks. Whoever well, Germans permit, them, of course. When did they ever? Aircraft are our best weapon against the U-boat, but their range is sadly limited. Our first air cover radiates 400 miles out from Newfoundland. The second, 600 miles from Iceland. Between these two safe havens lies nearly a thousand miles of unprotected ocean, the area known as the Black Pit, what our American friends would call bandit country. Any questions? Yes, there are. America's not in the war. Why is the U.S. Navy represented here? To show our support for the Royal Navy. Not the Royal Canadian Navy, sir? Of course, the RCN. Absolutely. We've got this German spotter plane on sight, see? The gunnery officers yelling, shoot, man, shoot, shoot. It's Bud shooting, boom, boom, boom. The officers all scrunched down from the noise, can't see a bloody thing. Go and track him, track him. Those spuds tracking that crowd's ass like a dog in heat. Yeah. Boom, 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 tracking right to left all along the horizon. Track in, track in. 
until he's aimed dead astern, shooting great Jeezley holes out of his own funnel. The gunnery officer's still bent over with his eyes closed, yelling, that's it, Spudo, good man, track that bastard. He's gonna move on, gentlemen. We lost half our bloody smokestack before the cocks and running and stopped it. Nobody knows what the hell they're doing out there. Welcome back, Canelli. Thank you, Coxon. I am Petty Officer Lang. You'll address me as Coxon. I am responsible for discipline below decks. A responsibility able seaman Canelli can tell you I take very, very seriously. been to sea before? No. Did you? Great Lakes. Same thing, only different. Water's water. How long were you in training? Six months. Yeah. What's your background? Family farm. It's my first time away. How about you, Collins? I'm a lawyer. Uh, world second of this profession. My practice, Richards. Without the rule of law, we'd be no better than the Germans. No offense, Lieutenant. Isn't somebody supposed to report to the captain that the crew is aboard? God, yes. Do keep in mind that this mess deck will be your home for the next 21 days or so. Like most of you, Fireweed has never been to sea before. Our job is to deliver her to the British escort force in Greenock, Scotland. Assuming we get her there in one piece, the crew will then be released for other duties on other ships. Put that cigarette out. Meanwhile, seeing as we're so short-handed, you'll all be doing double duties! any complaints? Good. Don't say I didn't ask. No. This way, gentlemen. This is the principal artillery piece for use in His Majesty's Canadian Corvettes. The 4-inch BL Deck Gun Mark IX. Unfortunately, we didn't get one of those, so this will have to do. Coxon, it's wood. Solid Canadian pine. How in the hell are we going to fight the Germans with that? Yeah, what are we supposed to do? Beat them over the head with it? No. We're supposed to use our depth charges, and if that doesn't work, then we beat them over the head with it. Now move! Let's get some back into it! Let's pull a sailor off your sister! Boom! Boom! I'm too old to wait for the states to get into this war, so I figured I'd sign on and shame them. Yeah, well, I'm glad you're here. You know, the Star of Corinth is in our convoy. No, I didn't. Well, I'm not sorry to be off that tub, are you? Some ways. Dimitri didn't even tell me you joined up. He didn't want to encourage you, Paul. I guess I better get used to calling you, sir. Yeah. Well, you can save that to where it's sea, Ted. <laughs> if Fireweed makes it out of the harbor tomorrow. It's that bad? Not good. They must have thrown this tub together. The engine hasn't even been tested. There's no oil in the pot. They're still preserving grease in the rods. I got no spare parts, and I'm short. Three stokers. Well, you're lucky. I'm shy half a crew. Forty men. Thirty of them have never been to sea before. My executive officer is a corporation lawyer. We've got a wooden deck gun up top, and my navigator has never been off the Great Lakes. What do you think, Ted? Are we in trouble or what? Maybe it ain't too late to join the mighty British Royal Navy. Sir. <laughs> yeah. Sir!
sick yet? Oh, no. No, I, I can handle two weeks of this. No, I'm a, I'm a natural sailor. Jeez, how bad can it be? Cheap smokes and free grub. I love it! I love it! <sighs> so, Tippy, uh, how long did the airplane stay? Until dark. Then we're in the black pit. What? The black pit? Oh. Right. Black pit. Great. Great. Whoa! German spy? No, Coxon. Then why are you dumping the gash overboard in broad bloody daylight, leaving a trail for the U-boats to follow? Lord, jeez, I didn't know. That is no excuse! One more cock up like this and we'll all be breathing seawater. You get below decks. Aye, aye, Coxon. Signal from SOE, sir. Two all escorts and convoy take up night stations. Bridge, wheelhouse, steer one, two, five. Steer one, two, five, sir. I guess our air cover's gone, sir. Oh, there you are, sir. Bad news. What? Fire we put to sea without a set of standing orders. Well, don't fret, number one. We'll make them up as we go along. The King's regulations, sir? Uh, uh, Mr. Collins, this is not the Royal Navy. Right now, we don't need the King. Our air cover is gone, and what we need are sailors to get us through the next thousand miles in one piece. Thank you, Mr. Collins. Look at that inclometer. She's really starting to roll now. Mm -hmm. Weather must be turning. North Atlantic, this time of year, Mr. Richards. We'll be lucky to see one calm day. I've ridden out a few blows in my time, Coxon. You should try Lake Erie when she's angry. Rough stuff, eh, sir? Damn right. Navigator. What's our position? We're here, sir. What, we're here? How the hell do you know that? Well, I've been... There's no coordinates plotted here. It's the end of day two. The convoy's supposed to be here, so we must be. The Black Pit starts 400 miles off of Newfoundland. Are we inside that or not? Mr. Richards, you should have been plotting us and the convoy from the first moment that we left Halifax. I'll keep my eye on the plot from now on. Oh, sir. yeah, that's right, you will. And you'll start with a star reading at first light. Tell me you can use the sextant. Not much call for them on the Lakers, sir. Right. First light, Mr. Richards, with your sextant. If you don't have one, I'll lend you mine. Nelson used to get seasick. Really? Thank you, sir. However, he didn't have U-boats to worry about. You're my submarine detection officer, Mr. Cooley. If you have to puke, you do it with your earphones on. Yes, sir. Carry on. Thank you, sir.
this bread. It's got mold on it. Slush a bit of jam on it, boy. Hey, you won't taste the green. The last Corvette I was on, we had fruit bread. I had to stop eating it because of the cockroaches. You see now, raisin with legs. Legs and love and a winner! <laughs> okay, guys, I got a buck over here. Who wants a piece of this? You want a piece of it? Get in here! Where's one of you been sleeping? Come on! Guys, uh... All right, good. Okay, get your mic right there. Kennelly, shoot the fin. They're singing my song tonight. Every bloody night. Heads up. Didn't know you were making your rounds, sir. Yeah, obviously. Because this ship leaks like a sieve, there's no excuse to be awash in your own filth down here. I know that most of you are new to this life. We are all tired. And we're sick of living wet, but this place is a pigsty. Now you turn to and get your mess deck squared away. Here, the captain doesn't want you walking in water. McNaughton and Tiffy get the mops. Morris and Canelli, two buckets each. Now! Three's running raw. We'll be in trouble if I don't shut her down and take a look-see. We can't stop, Ted. You know that. We've got to keep station with the convoy. Captain, sir. It's fully here. Could you come to the exit room, please? And you think it was a sub? Yes, sir. I'm sure. But you don't think so, Mr. Pooley? No, sir. I'm certain it was a school of fish. It sounded just like the false echoes they played to us in training. It wasn't there long enough for anyone to... Yes, it was. No, it wasn't. Yes, it was. No, it wasn't. Yes, it... All right! And no further contact. Yes, sir. Not a peep. Sure, we couldn't use the sub that fast. Oh, it's not possible. Shall I alert the SOE that we may have had a contact, sir? It was a school of fish, sir. Now, hold off. I'm not going to sound an alarm over some noisy herring. A warning to all ships from SOE, sir. Their Aztec heard a possible sub echo. Vanished on contact. A false alarm? It had to have been. There's no way they could lose an echo that fast. Oh, they might. If he was a lone wolf, he pulled back and report our position. The rest of the pack could be stationed ahead of us on the convoy route. We could be sailing right into them. Sir. Seven's a winner, guys. It's like they had eyes, what can I say? Were you this lucky on Civvy Street, McNaughton? Well, you gotta play the angles, Canelli. I mean, as soon as we get into Scotland and off this gash bucket, I'm gonna wangle myself a nice little jammy job on shore. You mean you don't want another ship? What, are you kidding? Well, then why'd you join the Navy? Well, there's a, there's a war on. Why else? Yeah, I'm doing my bit, that's all. Somebody has to. <laughs> well, anyway, it'll all be over by Christmas, won't it? <laughs> it won't a bit. Come on, guys, with these. I want to bet with these. Yeah! Seven's a winner again! Oh, I'm on a streak! I'm through. Hey, where are you going? No money. Hey, come on, mate, get in the action here.
ordinary signalman McNaught. Off. Cap! Ordinary signalman McNaughton, sir. Guilty of an act to the prejudice of good order and naval discipline in that he was gambling on the upper deck at 1530, sir. All right. Well. These are nice looking bones, McNaughton. Although, you know, I do have to wonder what a young OD getting paid, what, a uh, buck 20 a day is doing with precision tooled, genuine American club dice with uh, serial numbers. Well, I got them on Civvy Street, sir. They're my lucky charms. Is that right? He's been a very steady winner since we left Halifax, sir. Well, lucky you. Show me the other pair. Sir? I've seen these. These are half your game. I would like to see the set that you win with. I don't know what you mean, sir. Uh, bad choice, McNaughton. All right, Coxon, we'll continue this in the mess deck where his shipmates can see what I pull out of his pockets. Yes, sir. Seven, a winner. And again, shoot the Finn boys, they're singing my song tonight. And again. And now we back off and we use the straight pair. Don't we? Yes, sir. Oh, crap three, a loser. You know, you know, I remember we had a cook on the old Island Prince. One of his mates caught him cheating in a stud game. They nailed his hands to the mess deck table. Now, that, that couldn't happen here, of course. Our tabletops are steel. I am short-handed as it is, McNunn. So I'm gonna reserve judgment on you, but let me tell you something. You, you so much as bet on a racing cockroach, and I will personally take you down to the mess deck, I will turn you upside down, and I will show your mates how they've been cheated. Sir. Are we clear? Yes, sir. Carry on, Coxon. On cap. About turn. Double march. Sir. Got a dandy trap for you, McNaughton. Coxon! I'm gonna fall! You fall on my deck, McNaughton, and I'll break your arm! You keep a sharp lookout, McNaughton. Yeah, I couldn't have handled that better myself. No, sir, you probably couldn't. Then again, it's not your job, is it, sir? Is it? What's eating you, Petty Officer Lang? You can't trust your officers to do their jobs and you've lumped me in with them. I'm regular Navy, sir. I leave the life and death decisions up to the captain. So you let me worry about water in the mess deck and who's doing what to who. That's my job. You just keep us alive and afloat. Carry on, Coxon. Aye, aye, sir. I can't say nothing with a bloody gale on my kisser!
But I thought the prairies were endless. This bloody sea just goes on and on forever. So lonely twas that God himself scarce seemed there to be. It's the ancient mariner, Cafferty. Yeah.
Mr. Cooley, get out here! Quartermaster, take the wheel, Coxon! Reports the bridge now! What the hell are you looking at? underneath us right now! And with no engines, we are sitting ducks! And you, why the hell didn't you stay on course? You were steering like some goddamn ordinary seaman! I was chasing the bloody compass, sir! It's useless in heavy weather! God damn it! Captain, that's incremental, sir! The convoy can't wait for us! We must catch up when we can! And I heard another distress call! Mercy ship under attack! Yeah, how the hell are we supposed to help her? We can't even help ourselves! What the hell is it now? Ordinary Stephen Morrison is missing. I think he went over the side. Damn! is yours. You're supposed to keep it running no matter what. Now you get us flashed up and moving before a U-boat punches our ticket. Why isn't the engine pinging? We got no engines, sir. How are we supposed to chase down an echo? Scanning for surface noise. A time like this, that's where the U-bolts will be. And with any luck, we'll hear the sound of their diesels. Or a torpedo. Mr. Cooley, anything? No, sir. For us to hear any U-boats, we need absolute silence. Some son of a bitch was up there yelling his head off a minute ago. I know what I saw. You think you saw Morrison? Three, four guys. I seen a Mac for sure. Come on. Quiet down, guys. Need to hear that Kraut tinfish if he's out there. And he is. He says he thinks he saw some guys in the drink last night. Couldn't. It was pitch black out there. I know what I saw. Young claims he saw men in the water last night. Survivors? No, that's impossible. We run right over them. Sunk last night. Numbers 42, 38, 23, oh, names, 36. Man. Names. In here, sir. Forty-two London Pride. Twenty-three Star of Corinth. Thirty-eight Rachel's Deer. Thirty-six Stratford Park. That's enough. Survivors. Message said no survivors were picked up, sir.
Well, sir, we made it. Fireweed. I expected you two days ago. The engine packed up, sir. And I lost a man. We were lucky to get here at all. Luckier than the convoy you were supposed to escort. She lost nine merchant ships and over 400 men. When you assumed command, the Navy assumed you would hold your ship on station, Mr. Dover. Well, if the ship... Devereaux, sir. And if the ship had been mechanically sounding, I could have remained on station. She'll need a full refit before you can use her again. Well, write up a defect list. I'll see what I can spare for you. Sir? Excuse me. Sir? Oh, no, no. No, that's a mistake. For me, no. My orders were to deliver fireweed here. For our end use. That, that's all. I did that. As I understand it, officers and crew are to be released to Manning Pool for other duties and other ships. No mistake, Dover. Fireweed and ship's company are assigned to my escort force. You are mine. For the duration. Oh, and regarding shore leave, you colonials tend to be somewhat, uh, somewhat exuberant your first night ashore. So confine your crew to the dockyard for 24 hours. Oh, we don't want them alarming the local citizenry, do we? You're a jazz fan. Uh, guilty. This must be new. I thought I had all their records. Before the war, actually. You're fireweed, aren't you? Harry Conwell. Paul Devereaux. I must get this. She's marvelous. You'd never know she was English. You would unless you had a tin ear. That's a smoke and whiskey voice. Pure nightclub. I should know. I'm Ann Conwell's biggest fan. That's a tea and watercress sandwich voice. Pure English Rose. I should know I'm her brother. <laughs> yeah, pull the other one. Straight goods, old boy. Care to bet a fiver? Yeah, you're on. Evening, Conwell. Hello. Evening, sir. Gentlemen. Large pink gin, aren't you? So, Conwell, you're due out of refit next week. Not before time. I need you back. Here I've been lumbered with another bloody load of colonial reservists. Uh, sir, have you met... I agree with Churchill. We should pull them out of the Atlantic altogether. Simply not up to our standards. Thanks, Archie. Well, up the Navy. Hmm. Walker, I want a word with you. My apologies, Doctor. This is... Thank you. 
You, babe. Can you blame me? Want to cut a rug? Do I what? Cut a rug, jitterbug. You know, dance, babe. <coughs> All right. My name's Ivy. Me, babe. <laughs> I'm back. Come in, come in. Welcome to my humble abode. Lucky you. Yes, well, the last place they gave me was an upholstered sewer. Oh, this is nice. How'd you manage to get a flat in town? By sucking up too old best, mostly. He farms this place out to chaps in refit. I'll be living in my ship again soon. Uh, drink? Uh, yeah. Oh, uh... Paul Devereaux, meet my sister, Anne Conwell. She sings for her supper. And you owe me five quid. Hello. Mark! Fine weeds going that way. Well, which way are you going? I'm going this way. Well, walk you home. And walk yourself into trouble and all. Yeah, why not? You're not allowed out the dockyard. Well, you work here, don't you? Where's the hole in the fence? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're a fly wee devil, McNaughton. Can I have my hat now? Oh, yeah. It's a nice hat, by the way. It's a pretty brooch. It's my granny's. Thank you. So listen, Ivy, you ever hear of any jammy jobs going around in Admin? Something for a dryland sailor? He's allergic to water? So, how come he gives you five quid? One of your gramophone records is playing, and he was rather going on about you. So I turned to the poor forlorn fellow and I said, I should know, I'm her brother. <laughs> and you didn't believe him? No, no, of course I didn't. I mean, what are the odds of meeting Ann Conwell's brother? Oh, even money, if you're in the Navy. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's our family business, you see. Always has been. We look after our own. Our father sailed with old best. Mm, and that's what got me into all this. What's your excuse, Paul? Um, Seemed like a good idea at the time. <laughs> Dimitri said I'd be crazy to join the blue suits. Who's Dimitri? Uh, he's my old skipper on the Star of Corinth. Star of Corinth? Didn't she go down in Convoy 517? Yeah. I killed him. How so? Uh, just crashing about in the dark. You know, everything. Uh, just, just madness, everything going wrong at once. And ships burning all around us. One of the crew claimed that he saw survivors. I steamed right over them. We found debris off his ship. Dimitri must have been there. No, no. Might have been there. Your man might have seen something. Paul, I read the briefing on 517. It was a shambles. You're bloody lucky your engine broke down and got you well out of it. 
Don't waste your guilt, Paul. Save it for the rotten choices you have to make with your eyes wide open. Save it for the true nightmares. I do. Two days in the black pit and we flushed our first U-boat. Oh, did he shoot his torpedoes at your mark? Never gave him the chance, babe. First, our guy's blown to the surface with the depth charges, right? He comes up, the deck gunner is on his gun, he's pointing it right at me. I'm sitting there and thinking, what do I do? So, I shine my 10 inch signal lamp, I'm a signal lamp, right in his face. I totally blinded him, you see? And then our guys came in with the machine guns, right? It was great. Hey, would you like to go to a dance one night? Come on, Ivy. God knows when I get the chance to see a pretty girl again. I don't think so. You know, you know, fire we could be sailing back in a U-boat alley tomorrow. Oh, Mark, do you mean might not come back? Yeah, that's exactly what I mean. Anything can happen out there, Ivy. You know what it's like. But someone has to fight those bastards. <laughs> we, we, we flushed our first U-boat? Yeah? <laughs> Your wee shit couldn't have flushed my clutchy. <laughs> what did you shoot him with? Your wooden pop gun? <laughs> Why we just not going anywhere, sunshine, except the scrag into the dockyard till New Year at least? <laughs> you like, I'm not fit for convoy duty. This is my place. Good night, Mr. Mark. Dockyard's that way. Don't get caught sneaking back in. at us. Jerry's after you lot in the dockyard. We get the near misses sometimes. Hope my mother's asleep. Do you get a lot of air raids? Sometimes. You've not seen the bombing before? No. The war hasn't touched Canada. What's it like for you guys? You can get used to anything, I suppose. I really miss is a bit of decent grub. Chocolate. I a good vibe, you know. You two youngsters should get inside. You better come in. If you wake my mummy up, sunshine, I'll give you a kick. You know where. Looks like they're going after the naval yard. With any luck, they'll hit fireweed. Don't cross your fingers, Paul. Corvettes are tough as terriers. Yeah. Well, I must have drawn the runt of the litter then, and the crew to match. And mind you, her skipper is no great shakes either. You should have seen me strutting my stuff in Halifax. Salty Devereaux. Yeah, I couldn't wait for my first command. Figured I'd teach the Navy a thing or two. Thank Christ they didn't give me a destroyer. I do know the sea. But Dimitri was right when it comes to fighting a war on it. I'm no better than the bloody ship. Never mind. Maybe Old Mist will give you a job teaching reef knots to sea cadets. Woo! Are <laughs> <laughs> you so happy about you're in deep trouble when you get back? If they catch me. Gotcha! You've been a drift all night, man. You weren't even allowed to hop the dockyard. Jeez. Look at this. They really clobbered this street. Hold it, driver. Stop, stop. Uh oh. Say nothing and look sorry. McNaughton. McNaughton, what are you doing here? Morning, sir. Any chance of a lift? I hope this. 
Been reading through your file here, McNutton. Tough read. I'm a tough guy, sir. Yeah. So what makes a tough guy like you join the Navy? Oh, the uniform, sir. The babes love it. And that's it? Well, of course, to help defend convoys carrying vital supplies to Britain's island stronghold, sir. Well, surprisingly enough, that's why most of us are here. So tell me something, McNaughton. What is it that you expect from the Navy? I'll settle for a transfer off of this tub, sir. I can't do that. You want to know why? Because you're the boss and I ain't. Wrong. It's because, believe it or not, this ship needs you. You're a good signalman. You're quick, you're savvy, fireweed is short crew, and the truth is, I can't afford to lose you. Thank you, sir. That makes me feel a whole lot better. Look, there's a war on, McNaughton. Who, who's gonna fight this thing if we don't? I, you know, I realize you, you didn't have it that great on Civvy Street, so why don't you give fireweed a chance? You know, the Navy is a... Family business, it always has been. We look after our own. Don't give me that, sir. You won't offer this ship as bad as I do. You think the lower decks ain't wise to you? We know what you think of the officers and us. Now, what do I think? You got stuck behind the eight ball. Got a lousy ship, it doesn't work. Got a bunch of foul ups to run it. The only diff between you and me, sir, is you can walk away. I can't. All I'm asking you for is the same treatment that you give the RN Corvette, sir. You know, HMS Pike, for example. HMS Pike has received a full refit from stem to stern, gyro compass, new astic, radio telephone. I must use my dockyard facilities where they will do the most good. HMS Pike is commanded by Lieutenant Conwell, an experienced, regular naval officer. Anything else on your mind? Yes, sir, there is. I have a comprehensive defect list here. What's on my mind is I'd like you to look at it. I do applaud your enthusiasm, but the Germans are being swept along by their enormous confidence. And they're winning. Can you be that confident? Why don't you shove your list under my door? Sir. Do you know a chummy Prentice, RCN commander off the Corvette Chambly? No, sir, I don't. What's all that about? Oh, the Commodore's very chuffed. Commander Prentice forced a sub to the surface last night off Greenland. He rammed her and got his own men aboard. The Commodore's very, very pleased. Celebrate.
just had a buzz from admin, sir. The Commodore requests an audience, 1,400 hours at his office. It must be about the retail. Yeah, don't bank on it. Look up ordinary seaman Morrison's address and send that on to his widow. Widow? The boy was only 17. Yeah, he married the day before he joined up. Right, I'll mail him today, sir. Uh, now, might I suggest your number one uniform for the refit meeting, sir? You know, best bib and tucker, all guns blazing. So it better be worth it, number one. You just strolled out the dockyard, bold as brass, with a fry up on your trousers. Mm -hmm. Were you not afraid of getting caught? Well, you know, not that many centuries want to feel up my legs, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> I think you've picked a winner with this one, Ivy. Oh, don't let him get around you this wee bit on me, Mummy. Why not? He wouldn't be the first. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so where's your dad, Ivy? He wants to know where my father is. Oh, uh, well, he's away down the corner shop for a packet of fags. Two years ago. We haven't seen him since. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You fools! <laughs> oh, best figurehead in for a refit. Didn't you hear? It disappeared during the night. Bloody hell, the old man will be livid. Get that typed up, please, Nancy. Where's my figurehead? What? Oh, don't beat about the bush, Dover. I know you Australians. Canadians. I want it back, and God help you if she's been damaged. You... I, I thought you called me in here to approve our refit. Ah, so that's it. What's it? Quid pro quo. A spot of blackmail, Dover? Yes, I should have... Before I showed up here, I had no idea the bloody thing was missing. Well, fireweed tops my list of likely hooligans. I intend to search your ship. Yeah? Well, be my guest. You know, it'll be the first time you've set foot in her since we've been here. And while you're there, sir, you do me a favor. You take a good look around that ship I've been saddled with. Oh, do shut up, man. And you, you know something? I wish I did have your damn figurehead. We gotta fix our leaking oil tanks, and my ERA could use the sawdust. Stop that! Devereaux, sir! My name is Devereaux. That's French-Canadian, which I assume should be a double pain in the ass for you, sir. Stand still and listen. I dislike and distrust reservist amateurs, colonial or otherwise. Especially jumped-up merchant marine types who think just because they've mucked about on a tramp steamer that they qualify for the bridge of a fighting ship. In my day, we had to prove ourselves capable of command. There's a berth open for a first lieutenant in one of my destroyers, effective immediately. She's senior ship of a Western Approaches escort group, RN, of course. Serve a year as her number one. And if you're up to the mark, I'll give you a destroyer command. Well? I already have a command. And my ship and my crew. And no, neither of them are up to the mark. But I can drag them there. All I'd like to remind you of, sir, is that the Royal Navy is not the... Right, thank you, Nancy. Yes, you were saying. Nothing, sir. Didn't you want to remind me that the RN aren't the only ones sinking U-boats in the North Atlantic? 
that I don't have to like your style to appreciate a result? Or perhaps that you came over here to do a job and I should damn well let you get on with it? Isn't that what you wanted to say? Take that to CO Dockyard. Get your approval for refit. Stem to stern, full armament as per your request. I wanted to sound you out first. See if you'd make the intelligent choice. Alors, bonne chance avec fireweed, Monsieur de Vaux. Oh, and I do hate to see money wasted. So try not to sink her. Fireweed finally got her refit. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah. So I have 21 days leave now. Marvelous. I was wondering, excuse me. Are you busy now? Or? No, no, I have uh, some time. Uh, yeah, so anyway, I was wondering if uh, you and I, after your show tonight or whatever, whether you'd like to have some dinner with me tonight. Oh. Paul, I'd love to, but I, I'm going back to London on the night train. Oh. How well do you know London? I've never been there. Well, the German Air Force is rather fond of it at the moment, <laughs> but you could deal with that, couldn't you? Yeah, I think I could deal with that. Oh, Paul, listening to you the other night was like listening to Harry all over again. You mustn't be so hard on yourself. Your skipper was right. A war is a, a different business. It, it seems to me that you're always going to be alone out there, so trust your instincts more. You know, confidence is very catching. So, the night train. First time he's ever gone coal mining Glasgow style. It won't hurt him, Mummy. Mac is working class, same as us. He's our class right enough, but I wouldn't call him a worker. He's too fly for that, our Mac. Hey, <laughs> you need eyes in the back of your head with that one. Angela, cut, Mummy. Your man's his own worst enemy. Do not let his um, nature get him in trouble. All right? Five weeks away soon, anyway. Yeah, that was a lot, man. Sooner than Mackie knows. I know, because I'm doing the work on her. There you go, Ma. That should keep your drawers warm. Oh, <laughs> you're a cheeky wee thing, ain't you? Man, that sure is a hard way to keep warm, waiting for coal to fall off the train. Do you have to do this every winter? Mm -hmm. Only since the rationing. It's a bloody war, isn't it? What can you do? We are doing plenty already, my girl. <laughs> and you. <laughs> like what? 
Don't you be hiding your light, son. Every convoy that makes it across puts food on our table. There's folks in this country would starve, truly, if not for you lads. Man, you am getting bloody sick of your powdered eggs. <laughs> I, um, I think this will do fine. Let's away home and put the kettle on. Okay. I help you with that market. Maybe I should stick around and keep you warm this one. Some go. What about your other girlfriend? I find he's getting all told up for you. Yeah, well, I hope she's a better date than last time. You never know the black kiddo. <laughs> Während England und die sogenannte Verstärkung ihren Kolonien von Übersee große Verluste verschmerzen, hat Deutschland sich für einen totalen Sieg im Nordatlantik vorbereitet. Unsere jungen Unterseebothelden haben sich den Marsch zum Westen als ihren persönlichen Jagdhund ausgewählt. Die fette englische Bulldogge wird niemals über die hungrigen Wölfe unseres Führers triumphieren. Mehr als 400 U-Boote unter dem Command von Großadmiral Karl Dönitz warten nur auf das Ziel des Angriffs gegen die alliierten Flotte. Enough of that rubbish. Lights! If you lot haven't seen a U-boat before, you bloody soon will. Convoy OX-65, the largest movement of ships we've attempted to date. Escort force, one destroyer, four corvettes. Woefully inadequate, I know, but more than I can spare. You must keep the convoy moving. Do not turn back to stragglers. There are no second chances in the North Atlantic. Oh, and have a careful eye to merchant vessel 6-4. She's carrying evacuee children to Canada. I managed to get a good fix. Uh-huh. And where are we? The convoy is five miles to starboard of its planned track, but we're in station. We're 53 miles into the bike pit. A message from Pike, sir. Go ahead. Very buxom wooden stowaway, discovered on board, would look splendid in fireweed wardrobes. What's that all about? I don't know. Pike, that's Conwell's ship, isn't it? Yes, it is. We're in good company. Make it to Pike. Suggest commit stowaway to deep. Steamship 64. May I play through the ship? Yeah, go ahead. With the blitz the way it is, I wonder how many of those kids will see their families again. Yeah, well, they'll be safer in Canada than in London. As long as we all get there, sir. Always the optimist, McNaughton. I'm glad you decided to come along. Did I have a choice, sir? Oh, I'm sure that devious mind of yours could have thought of something. I half expected you to. Yeah, me, you, sir. This war ain't gonna go away by itself. Somebody's gotta show up for it. Might as well be me. Us. <laughs> Thank you.
Will you look at that? Dry as a bone. We're on top for now, boys. We're on top of something, that's for sure. You boat? Came and went. Did you tell Pooley? What for? You'd only say it was a bloody fish. Hardly believe the change in the crew, sir. Yeah. I was gonna give them a little pep talk on our first day out, but didn't want to step on any toes. Anyway, it seems like they've come together on their own. Uh, there was a rumor that uh, you were offered a British destroyer, but you decided to stick with the fireweed, sir. Might have something to do with it. Bearing red one five. Can you classify it? Echo bearing red one five, sir. Classified U boat. On my way. Hudson at wheel, course two seven five. What this light belt on? Makes to pike. I am in contact with submarine. Wheelhouse port ten. Port ten. Ten a port. Wheel on six. Firewood to Pike. I'm in contact with submarine. I'm in contact with submarine. Out. I'm losing him, sir. I think he's surfaced. Lost echo. Submarine probably on surface. Stand by Starshell. Stand by Starshell. submarine in this area. Well, bully for him. You'll take advantage of the moonlight number one, so watch for him on the surface. Hike the fireweed. Radar shows. Surface U-boat. Directly ahead of you. He's after the stragglers. Starshell, green three zero. Object in water, to be conning tower. Pour it on, Jack, give me all she's got. Dead gun, repeat, Starshell, green three zero. Submarine holding on surface. For Pike again, sir. Dead ahead. You can't miss it. You go dead ahead. It's those kids, sir. They're between us and the U boat. Got to stop for them. Uh huh. We stop. He nails us. Slow down, Slow down. Court 
Roger, Captain Convoy 39 stopped to pick up survivors. Big mistake. He's dead. Went down with his crew. All the guys he'd saved. Mr. Collins, deploy scramble nets over starboard side. I want absolute silence. Make to SOE and to Pike. Found children in sea. Stop to take on board. Mr. Pooley. Yes, sir. I want total silence. Not a sound. No transmissions. You listen for that U-boat. Yes, sir. SOE replies negative, sir. Return to convoy screen. You sure that was the message, McNaughton? No, sir. Message very garbled. Particularly in these conditions? Yes, sir. I'd have to say message not received. Make it fast. Keep it quiet, kids. Easy now. We're coming. Message from Pike, sir. What is it? Do it. Make it fast. You've got five minutes. You boat headed your way. All right, well, get down there and tell them we have five minutes to take on all survivors. You boat in five minutes. And be quiet about it. Lukovsky. Two minutes left, sir. Thank you, Mr. Pooley.
Torpedo, 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 we're in green 3 0. Engine full ahead, hard to starboard. Make the pike. Torpedo from zero, two, three. Second World War fades into legend. It's hard to remember how fervently people believed that by winning the war, the world would change. They did win, and the world did change, though not always as they imagined. Now, half a century later, as we look into our own future, let us remember the passion, idealism, and sacrifice of the men and women of the Royal Canadian Navy. They are true heroes. They deserve to be celebrated, and their legacy lives on. <laughs>